Hey, yo, what's up, guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Problem 710 today, random pick with blacklist. That is, uh, it's currently being asked by Two Sigma, if I remember correctly. Uh, Two Sigma is a New York City kind of AI based hedge fund. Uh, they do a lot of really cool work. I'd check them out uh, if I was you. And uh, this is one of the problems they've been asking recently. It's a really good problem. It came in as a request from one of our viewers. So I figured we'd, uh, we'd cover it. If you have any requests yourself, my contact is down below as always. Now we're in this problem, we're, we're given a blacklist B containing unique integers from zero to N, zero being inclusive N being not inclusive. And we need to write a function to return a uniform random integer from O of N, which is not in B. So return a number that's not in the blacklist. Uh, optimize it such that call such optimize it such that it minimizes the call to systems math.random. So call that function as little as possible. Um, and you know they, they give us some sort of really high bounds. I don't know, this might be a, a billion or so I didn't count. It doesn't really matter. We'll we'll make it optimal. And so the kind of the, the interesting thing about this problem is that there are a few ways to tackle it. Uh, the one brute force one that, that might come to mind is just to create a whitelist. That's what, what I did first, and I, I kind of created a, a, a set um, of, of all the numbers from 0 to n and then just backed out the ones that are in the blacklist. So I, I walked through it iteratively. Um, that's okay. Conceptually, it works with, with numbers this big, though, um, and you know blacklists of, uh, of that size. You, you'll run into memory issues. So right off the bat, that's something worth mentioning in your, in your interview, sorry, but not something that would be worth pursuing as an option. Another example of, of how I found to tackle this was kind of sorting the, the blacklist and then using a, a modified binary search to kind of look through the numbers. Um, I, I say that only in passing because the solution is out there. I didn't quite understand it myself, so it, uh, it would have been very dishonest to me to, to try to cover it for you guys. Uh, there is a third solution, though, that's, that's really, really clever, and it involves an algorithm that quite frankly, I haven't really applied anywhere else apart from this problem. So I've, I've done my best to kind of explain it in a way that, that makes it still transferable to other problems, although it, it might to some extent kind of be localized to, to a problem such as this one quite uniquely. But nevertheless, we'll, we'll let's, let's look through an example and, and see what we can do here. Um, I do also apologize if you're hearing a, a bit of background noise today. We have a pretty gnarly windstorm in Toronto for whatever reason, so it's uh, you might hear that swishing around. Now, in the in the example we're looking at, we're going to take n is 6, meaning that we can have all the numbers from, from 0 to 5 inclusive. And let's say that our blacklist includes the numbers 0, 2, and 3 in the form of a list. And so what I've done is I've, I've kind of colored those in black with my fine art skills and then, you know, written in the 0, 2, and 3 in, in white ink. The the essence of how to solve this problem really efficiently is actually going to be in, in creating some form of a whitelist. So we, we, we kind of mentioned that in the brute force approach. It, it will still come in some form, but maybe not in an obvious form. In particular, we're going to make the function such that we are only ever going to make one call to, to random every single time the pick function is called. So maybe just to be clear here, we need to initialize some some object with a, a certain property with this blacklist and light, whitelist maybe and and every time pick is called we need to pick an item that's that's not on that blacklist the way we're going to do that is going to be through a pretty clever way of mapping numbers and and in particular the way we're going to to map these numbers is such that certain numbers on the blacklist if that number is rolled if that number is randomly generated will actually map to a number that's on the whitelist okay so this is where we're going to get we're, we're going to have to get a bit clever with this algorithm. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to create, uh, so we're gonna to need to create a whitelist. And, and what I'll do is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna call it temporary, temporary whitelist, and I'm going to make it a set. And this set is going to include all of the numbers that are in the range uh, from, let me, let me write this out here. So it'll be from uh, n minus length of b length of b, all the way until n. So what do I mean by that? I have six items here, and I've got three items in the, um, excuse me, in the in the actual uh, blacklist. So imagine kind of splitting this down here, down the middle, in this case it's down the middle, it doesn't necessarily need to be. I'm gonna be looking at the upper half here. So I'm only almost gonna take one category, one bucket of these numbers, um, and, and use them to start creating a, a whitelist. And, and this temporary whitelist will come into play in just a bit after I load it and manipulate it a bit. But what I want to do is want to say kind of from this upper group of numbers, which, which go from 
um, the total number of numbers n uh, minus the length of, of the benchmark up until n, I want to add all of those to a temporary whitelist. And so what I'm going to do in this case, those numbers are 3, 4, and 5. Now, these numbers, we just looking at this, we understand that in our blacklist, we've got 0, 2, and 3. And so, you know, 3 in particular right here definitely can't be in our, in our whitelist of numbers. So what are we going to do about that? Well, I need to now start. So my, my first step is kind of create this, this temporary uh whitelist. My second step is going to be to iterate through the through the blacklist and pick out all the numbers that are that are in the in the temporary whitelist that shouldn't be there. And the reason we can pick these out nicely here, which is why I created this as a set, is because we get that constant time lookup. So I can I can iterate through here and notice that zero is not in the whitelist, two is not in the whitelist, three is in the whitelist. I'm gonna scrap it. Okay, so once I scrap it our temporary whitelist will simply look like this. It'll look like 4 and, and 5. And so once I've got this, this temporary whitelist created here, sorry, I'm, I'm pulling up my notes kind of um, as I speak, the, uh, the part where this is going to get a bit a bit maybe unintuitive is now I'm going to create my formal whitelist. And, and the way that I'm going to create this formal whitelist will be a using a dictionary and we're going to map, uh, map certain blacklist values to non-blacklist values and and this is it's one of those questions like I I really I sat around for a while to try to figure out what the most intuitive way to explain it would be um, so kind of bear with me this might be one of those where you need to rewatch the video once or twice in order to kind of let it settle in because this is super super not intuitive the way I'm going to create this whitelist is that I'm going to say for for every number within this um, for every number within this blacklist, if it's part of this, this kind of lower half, this lower bucket of numbers, namely if it's less than n minus length of b, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those to a dictionary. Okay, and what I'm going to do with that dictionary is I'm going to map it to a number that's on the whitelist, which will naturally be in the second half of these buckets. So notice that kind of in this first and second half, I've got, you know, in, in this in the second half, I've got four and five, which are whitelist numbers. I'm going to need access to those somehow because I want to be able to generate them. Um, and on the left-hand side, I have this one. So fine, okay, we'll, we'll see where that comes into play. I'm gonna start again, or once again, iterating through my, my blacklist. So I'm, I'm gonna check the zero, and I'm gonna say the zero fall in this first bucket, meaning is it less than n minus length of b? Yes, it does. I'm gonna add it to my dictionary as the key. And as the value, so I, I want to basically say, if I roll a zero, if I randomly generate a zero, instead of returning zero, because I can't, it's in my blacklist, I want to return another number that is in the whitelist. And the numbers that we have so far are four and five. Again, I will adjust this one afterwards. So I, I haven't forgotten about it. I'm only looking at the ones that are in that second half of the bucket, or in the, yeah, in the second half bucket. So... I'm using using iteration and, and the code here in Python will we'll, we'll take a look at it in a bit. I'm going to say, let me look at the first item in the set iteratively, and, and that's going to be a four. So if I roll a zero, I will instead return a four. Now I'm going to look at the two. So I'm iterating through the next step of the blacklist. Is two in the first half here? Is it is it less than n minus length to b? It is. So I'm going to add that as a key, and I'm going to map it to the next item in my iterable object here, which is a set, and, and that's going to map to five. I'm going to check the three. Is three in the first half, or is it less than n minus length of b, right? Those two are synonymous. Uh, it's not. And so I'm not going to do anything with it. And it just so happens that at that point, I'm done. I've walked through all of these. So what have I actually done here? What does this allow me to do? Like, well, why was this a clever thing to do in order to return the numbers we want? Why this was clever is because now, in, in, my, in my final step, and really this is going to be in the pick function, when I generate a random number, I'm going to generate a random number between 0 and n minus the length of b, non-inclusive, right? Minus the length of b, non-inclusive. Meaning, I'm going to generate either a 0 or a 1 or a 2. Why? If I generate a 0, what am I going to return? According to my whitelist here, I'm going to return a 4. If I generate a 1, what am I going to return? Well, what we're going to do when we generate this number is we're going to say if it's not in the whitelist, in this kind of modified whitelist we made, then it must be legitimate. And so maybe the verbiage here, I, I want to make sure that it's not confusing, but this whitelist actually comprises of keys which are on the blacklist and values which are on the whitelist. So if I roll a one and it's not in this object here, I'm cool with it. It means it was never in my blacklist. The only items that are here are the items that were on the blacklist. Uh, if I roll a two, 
And notice now that 0, 1, and 2, sorry, 0, 1, and 2 are the only numbers that can roll here. They're the only numbers in this range. Then I will return a 5. Okay, why is this good? Let's think about what the problem asks. We need to return with uniform probability uh, any number that's not on the blacklist. Those numbers are 1, 4, and 5. If I roll a 0, I'll return a 4. If I roll a 1, it'll return a 1. If I roll a 2, it'll return a 5. Each of these has an equal likelihood of being rolled because I'm only rolling numbers from 0 to 2. You may ask yourself, then, what about this 3 up here? Since 3 is kind of in that second half of the bucket, I'm not even going to be generating numbers that are that big to roll, right? We're only going from 0 to n minus length to b, which is, in this case, 6 minus 3, which is 3 non-inclusive, meaning 0 to 2 de facto, 2 being inclusive. I'm only going to roll numbers from 0 to 2. Between 0 to 2, I'm going to return every possible uh, number that exists on the on the actual whitelist. So that, that whitelist being 1, 4, and 5. Um, again, I, I apologize if the verb, maybe the, the nomenclature that I used here is, is, is a bit unintuitive. I didn't know what else to name it. Excuse me, my nose is itchy. Um, I didn't know what else to name it, but I, I called it whitelist for lack of a better name. And, and what it contains, again, the keys are items that are in the blacklist. And the values are numbers that are in a whitelist that we're going to map to in case these numbers are rolled. So no matter what, the the kind of the space complexity of this thing will be O of B in, in the worst case um, scenario. The time complexity will also be O of B because I'm never doing a longer walkthrough than a, a walkthrough of my um, of my blacklist. And so we've got an kind of O of B time, O of B space solution and when we're rolling this random number and we're, we're, we're deciding to kind of algorithmically roll it in this range we're always going to on our first roll get a number uh, that that is on the whitelist that is a permissible number and we're not going to need to call it multiple times over which was one of our one of our criteria uh, so I hope that algorithm makes sense if you if it's a little bit confusing watch the video over once or twice uh, if uh, if it if you know if it's still confusing after that drop a comment down below I'm happy to answer any questions this one was really tricky thankfully the code won't be won't be too difficult but you know nonetheless let's let's dive into it and see what it'll look like so the uh, excuse me again the the first thing I'm gonna do is just grab this uh, grab the end and grab the blacklist and, and add them to the object so that they're accessible because we will need them later so I'm going to add them as uh, as, as parameters here and what I'll also do is I'm going to create that whitelist, which is going to be a standard dictionary. And whoops, wrong buttons. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna refer to this dictionary right over here. So what I said was, you know, in our in our first step, we created a, a bit of a, a temporary whitelist here. So um, I'll call it temp whitelist, uh, and, and that's going to be equal to some some set. And what we needed to do in here was was in the set we began by generating all the numbers from n minus the length of b up to n, but not including. Okay. So what I'll say is for, for some number n in the range of n minus the length of the blacklist, uh, all the way up to n, again, non-inclusive, we're going to say temporary whitelist dot add that number. So we're going to add all those numbers to the set. And then the next step was to say, let's let's iterate through the blacklist and take the numbers that shouldn't be in that whitelist and, and, and just pop them right out. So we'll say for, for every n in the, in the blacklist, and notice I'm not using self here because we do have access to it. Um, I could, I don't need to, so I, I just, I didn't for no particular reason. Uh, we'll say if that number is in the temporary, in the temporary whitelist, then we want to remove it. So we'll say temporary whitelist dot remove that number n. And so that kind of takes care of the first uh, two steps of our algorithm here. If I was to walk through this example, at this point, our temporary whitelist looks like this. And our temporary whitelist is ready to be appended kind of to that true whitelist where we want these numbers four and five to be mapped to by other numbers from the blacklist that uh, that we don't want to return, right? We don't want to return the zero or the two, we want to return the, the four and the five. The way we're gonna do that is as follows, and I'm, I'm gonna set a variable that's called set iterator, and, and what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna create an, an iterator, I believe this is an, an object um, in Python, I believe it's considered an object, and we'll, we'll create this iterator for the for the temporary whitelist. Now, uh, before this question, I actually, I haven't used this function before, so I, just, I, I learned about it for the first time. Uh, I would look it up if you're unfamiliar with it. Java's got the same, C++ has something similar. I believe every, every language should have something equivalent. But what this will allow us to do is to be able to iterate through uh, an iterable such as a such as a set which we otherwise wouldn't really be able to do as it's not indexed and and you'll see the reason why here kind of in the next step because what we want to say is again for every number that's in the actual blacklist uh, what I'm interested in doing in the step here is to say 
if it's in the slower half, right? If it's in the slower half, then I want to create a mapping for it. So I'm going to see if n is, is less than n minus the length of the blacklist, which has kind of been like our, our magic number so far. I want to take that n number and it's going to be the key and then I want to map it to the next value of this set. So right now our set looks like 4 and 5. Maybe it might look like 5 and then 4, right? Because the numbers get hashed so we don't know what order they keep there. We don't keep a strict order. We can't index them and that's why the iterable is necessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a self dot whitelist of, of n. That's going to be my key. We want to set that to next of set iterator. What does this mean? This means since we haven't called this next function yet on this on this iterator, it will begin by saying set the key to you know zero, and the and the value to be four. Let's pretend that four is kind of the first number it finds in the iterable. The next time I walk through this and I call it next on set iterator, in the background it kind of has something like the equivalent to a pointer that points at let's say this four. And now when I call next on this iterator, it will simply jump to the next value that it finds in the set. Again, I can't really walk uh, walk through this. Like I can't keep a pointer on a certain index and then and then walk through the rest of the set that way in a, you know, kind of similar to how I would in an array because there's no inherent order. That's why this iterator function here was necessary. I'd look it up in the Python documentation if you're unfamiliar with it because it, it, it might be quite useful in, excuse me, in, in other work that you'll do in the future. And so at this point, what we've done is we've actually created uh, this, this whitelist over here. And, and all we need to do is to say, let, let's create a function that's going to generate a random number from 0 to you know, n minus the length of the blacklist, and then either return that number itself if it's not in here. So for example, if we generated a 1, we want to return the 1. Or if we generate a 0 or a 2, we want to return the mapping from that 0 or 2 to an equivalent number, or to maybe a a corresponding number in the in the whitelist. The four and the five here could be switched. It really doesn't matter. Um, four and five just seem naturally the way to order them, given how our brains think. Again, I don't know when the computer hashes these and, and stores them in memory. I don't know which one would come first, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to say that we'll we'll generate some number rand, and that'll be uh, called using random dot rand int uh, rand int, and the number we want to generate is going to be between uh, going to be between zero. And we said uh, n, or self.n now, because we need access to it, minus the length of the blacklist, so self.blacklist. And now, with this rand int function, uh, this is inclusive. This is inclusive, so I need to set minus 1 here to make sure that I'm grabbing only the numbers from, from 0 to 2, inclusive and not 0 to 3. Okay. Now that I have this number, I'm going to say, let me just return uh, self.whitelist of, of rand. Okay. And, and I'm going to add one more thing here, but you know, if I get this number and I roll a zero or a two, we have no problem here. Let's say I rolled a one. So one isn't in there. So if I roll a one and white isn't in that white list mapping, I want to return the one. So I'm only going to do this uh, if rand is in self.whitelist. Otherwise, uh, I just want to return the number itself, rand. So just about running out of space here. There we go. Uh, you could very much just turn this into two lines. So you could say something like, um, if rand in self dot whitelist, you could return you know self dot whitelist uh, rand. Otherwise, you could just return rand. So this is perfectly fine. I just for whatever reason I actually you know what forget it here. I like the ternary statements, but in the videos I try to stick to to something that's that's more legible. So maybe we can do this. Like you could put this in an else statement, um, and maybe that way it'll be like really crystal clear. And I'm gonna run this and just make sure I didn't make any any silly mistakes. And we're good. All right, so to, to recap, this solution was an O of B time and space complexity solution. Uh, it, it was a toughie with a very specific algorithm that personally I haven't at least encountered in, in other questions. I also, this is my first time using this, uh, this iterable here. Uh, really cool to know, really good to learn. Uh, tough problem, don't kick yourself if you, if you didn't get it the first time around. This, I, I've been sitting on this one for quite a few hours before it started to click and I was able to explain it. So take the time, view this video back. Check it over. Let me know down below if you have any questions. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.